Thank you for watching Andy Tube. This is part 10C. Um, in this part, what I want to do is uh, polish up some of the small parts, show you the different polishing methods, the tools, and the chemicals. Uh, I picked a few of the small parts that I've cleaned the bed slide or bobbin cover slide the presser bar uh, the presser bar bracket that slides into the s side of the machine uh, the presser bar lifter lever and the presser bar pressure thumb screw just some of the parts here there are times with uh, some of these that I take a Dremel with a soft wire brush and polish the parts up. Um, sometimes I want them to look better, sometimes I want them to slide easier. So like on this bed slide, the bottom of this is what slides along on the uh, aluminum bed that covers the bobbin. So I want these to be uh, slide real, real smooth. So I'll take a Dremel tool. I have a little extension on it. I have a, so a softer uh, wire brush on there. Be a little noisy, but I'll show you. Just like that. just to get it nice, nice and smooth. Uh, another part on this presser bar bracket. I have some discoloration and stuff after the rust removal there. So I'll, I like to polish that up, but I also like to polish the sides of this bracket where it's going to slide in the aluminum opening of the body. And I want that when when the customer lifts the presser bar up, I want it to be real real smooth. I don't want any hesitation or hanging up. So let me polish that this piece up real quick. Okay, you're getting the idea of that. And like I said, sometimes it's for function, sometimes it's for looks. But that's the quickest, easiest way I have found. You can put metal polish on there too, but that wire wheel just is, is quicker and very effective. Um, oh, one more thing. On the uh, 
presser bar, this part where the presser foot and the thumb screw go is always a little rugged and discolored. The whole bar is kind of discolored, but I'm going to polish it with a chemical. But this inside part right here, I have found polishes up uh, quicker and better with the wheel. Let me touch that up. Okay, a couple things I had to learn when I started this <clears throat> with that Dremel was to, to wear safety goggles because the little pieces of wire can fly off and stick in you. <laughs> so I always wear safety goggles. And the other thing is to, to just really use light pressure. Uh, the very tip of the brush is what does the cleaning. And I, I wore out and a lot of brushes by pressing too hard and that also makes the little wires fly off. So to to polish up like the needle bar and the presser bar it's it's kind of a pol smooth polish metal but it's not it's not a chrome piece like the presser bar lifter. And what I like to use on that is just the old brasso been around a long time. It's inexpensive. You can buy it everywhere. Even the, my local grocery store carries this. So um, I just shake it good. This is a little stinky, but I've, I've found it's, it's one of the most effective. So I dump a little bit out into the lid. Hopefully it'll come out of there. Come on, you. There we go. I get some in there to work with and then uh, you can put it on with a with a cloth a rag what I've started doing is just wearing the the gloves and getting some on my glove and just rubbing it on there to disperse it with my uh, fingers I found it takes uh, less of the product to do this because anytime you use a rag or a pad, it, it starts soaking into that. So half your product just soaks into the, the rag or the pad. So I like to just get it on there, spread it around, and let it uh, start working on there. I'll let that chemically work for a while. Now, I, I can also use that on the chromed pieces, like up here and the presser bar lifter. But one of my favorite products, when I can get it, is this Peak Polish, P-E-E-K. Uh, this is from the United Kingdom, and uh, I can usually find it, uh, somebody on eBay selling it. And I think it was 10 or 11 bucks for this tube, and it, it lasts me a long time if I remember to keep the lid closed. And this is a, a blue polish, like that, and it, it uh, doesn't smell, <coughs> it's not as volatile as the uh, Brasso. And it's been around a, a long time. It's I think it's like the official polish to the royal family or the queen or whatever they call it over there. But I'll do the same thing with it. I'll spread it around good on the part that I want to polish. I just like to cover it. This isn't really uh, rubbing it in or polishing it. It's just getting the, the polished compound on the part and letting it start doing its chemical thing and if I get some on the threads or someplace else I can clean it off later not a big deal so you get a little bit more of that so I, I, I let the 
compound get on these for you know a minute or two I don't I don't let them like really dry hard on there or anything like that and then uh, to remove it I'll take like an old microfiber microfiber towel to really do the polishing part of it and now is when I'm going to apply the the rubbing and the pressure and stuff like that and this is really rubbing the compound in and rubbing the compound off to get to get the actual polishing done and uh, that seems the microfiber towel seems the best at doing this but you can use any any you know rag a t-shirt old kitchen towel uh, I don't use paper towels or anything on this part that's got it looking a lot better uh, um, a final kind of like buffing I like to use something cotton an old t-shirt or a cotton towel at the end because it really seems to buff it up nice I don't use any power buffer or anything just by hand okay let's see how the chrome parts did now take the presser bar lifter again my old microfiber cloth and rub that around polish it get it off of there and you, you can do it two or three times if you want um, most of the vintage singers the chrome was actually triple plated so uh, unless it's scratched real deep you know you know, just I usually just polish it once and then again I will I like to buff it with something cotton uh, I have tied uh, like take an old t-shirt and tie it to the desk leg or a doorknob and hold the other end out taut kind of like a hammock and polish the part back and back and forth like that that works really good especially on kind of funny shaped parts I'll give you an idea how that came out all the chrome on the vintage machines even the other brands usually looks really good when you polish it up so I'll take that pressure thumb screw and polish that up good Whee! looks nice huh I'll tell you when you finish up and you you got all that polished and then some wax on the paint they really look almost brand new so that's the two main chemicals I use the Brasso works effective and inexpensive and the peaks which I use when I can find it it's more expensive but it lasts a long time I just really use it on the chrome but I've had very good results using the Brasso on the chrome pieces too so that's how these came out polished up and I'll do that to like the needle bar and uh, some of the polished uh, screws and chrome screws and any any part I think just needs to be uh, touched up or smoothed out and uh, that's polishing of the of the small parts so I hope you found that useful